All right, so I'm gonna do a quick video on this. Oh, did they cover the model? Now oh, there's HP, here we go, model 15M-BQ021DX. Okay, so first thing you wanna do, they already kind of lost all these pieces, but usually there's rubber pieces covering these. Um, so you wanna peel up this rubber piece, and underneath there's four PH1 or J1 screwdrivers, or screws, so remove those four. And then you'll have three uh, T5 screws at the bottom here. So keep them in order because they are different. You don't want to mix them up. All right. And then removing this cover is a little difficult, but if you have um, a thin enough tool to do this, you can do it. So I use this thin pry tool. So you just get the tool in the little gap there, and then you pop it. You'll hear a click. Just keep going around, go down, and then just keep doing the same thing. You'll hear it click. Okay. Just like that. Just go down, all right, go down there, and then just here, do that, and then pop it up. You'll hear it click, okay? That's how you know you're doing it right. Once you do that, you can kind of just pull on this. You wanna hold the, the top palm rest layer down and then pull up on this. If it doesn't come out, you can also pry along the sides, but I found that if you pull on this, you can actually get the whole thing out. So when you pull on the middle, what happens is the cover will flex like this and it will actually pull all the clips inwards and away. All right, after that, you just keep lifting the thing up, it'll unclip and then you can wiggle it and pop it out just like that, okay? So that's how you remove the cover. So I'm just gonna show how to do a battery, um, hard drive or SSD and maybe the RAM. This one's a little different. There's an M.2 slot here, SSD slot here. Um, I'm not sure if it supports PCIe NVMe or just SATA SSDs, um, but there is a slot there, okay? So if you wanted, you can add this on top of the regular hard drive if you wanted double uh, the storage. Anyways, we're gonna remove the battery first. You don't really need to remove the battery to replace the hard drive or the RAM, um, but we're just gonna remove it because they had to upgrade their battery or replace their battery because their old battery was bad. Um, let me see if I have the old battery to show what it looked like. Okay, I have it here. So I'll show the old battery just so you can see what it looked like. And then after removing this battery, it actually will reset the CMOS or the BIOS. So it will tell you that the settings have been reset. Um, so that's normal. I'll show you when I once I put it all back together. So take out all the screws. There's four along the top here and then there's three along the bottom. Okay. Once you remove all those screws, you just grab it and you pull this part up, okay? And the battery just comes out like this. So this is what the old battery looked like. So this is the HP model, LK03XL. So that's the battery. Or you can use the HP spare part number, which is 916814-855, okay? So that's the HP model. And this is the replacement one. They actually put the label on the bottom. It has the same LK03XL but the back has this metal backing, okay? So that's the battery. Okay, so of course to put the battery back in, you just line it up. There's two little holes there, so you line one up with that notch and then the other one you just drop down. Um, I'll actually leave the battery out for now. Um, if you're messing with things that kind of can cause problems with the electricity, um, especially like the LCD cable or something, you wanna open the computer with the battery out Press and hold the power button for about 10 to 15 seconds here, okay? And then that will drain any power from the computer so you don't accidentally damage anything. Anyways, um, we're gonna take out the hard drive. Uh, right now I put an SSD in there. So to remove that, there's a latch here. You just flip that up, okay? Once you flip that up, you can actually grab this little blue tab and you can pull the connector out. It'll come out like this. To get the hard drive out, especially if this thing hasn't been opened or moved in a while, this rubber is going to be kind of stuck to the plastic. So I use the plastic tool, I mean the metal pry tool in the side behind the between the plastic and the hard drive. And then I use that to kind of pry it. And you will kind of have to go around and then pry it up. Okay. So it came out pretty easy because I already took it out once before. But yeah, it's going to be kind of tough. And this rubber piece you want to transfer over. As you can see, it has these little nubs that are supposed to go in the screw holes. Okay. But that's pretty much how you get that. This little connector, you have to transfer it over. It's a little tough to remove because if you pull on this uh, black por portion of it, you can actually rip that out. So you want to be careful and make sure that you're prying. I don't know if you can tell, but there's a lighter gray part 
So you want to pry on that, not on the black piece, okay? So pull on that, okay? If you want, um, the easier way, once you get a gap like that, if you have like a thin pry tool like that, you can stick that in the gap and then you can twist that to kind of pop it open, okay? Just like that. Same thing with the other side, but this cable's kind of in the way. But you go over there, get the tool in there, and then you can kind of twist that to kind of pop it out, just like that, okay? So just like that, you can pop this connector off. Okay, so we got this. This is the Theta um, connector. So anyways, I'm gonna put it back on. Be careful not to put pressure on the cable itself because you can easily damage that cable. Okay, so I'm gonna put this back in but that's how you would change the hard drive. If you are gonna put a new hard drive or an SSD, make sure that you either install the operating system, um, you're gonna install the operating system to this, or that you cloned your hard drive before swapping it. So I have videos showing how to do that. If you need help finding it, just um, post a comment in the comment section below and I'll um, send you that link, but there you go. So I'm gonna put this tab in there. Okay, so to put it back, just make sure that the tab is flipped up and then put this cable back in. Watch that back down. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. All right, so let's see here. So let's see if I can figure out what all these little components are. It says microphone there, but I don't see a microphone there. Hmm. Okay, I don't know what this little board is. It says mic. Oh, there's a... Um, SD card slot there. Okay, it looks like the USB-C port is part of the main board, but you can replace the SD card slot. Um, you got the trackpad cable here, keyboard cable, keyboard backlight cable. Um, you got the LCD or LVDS connector. It should be, it's combined with the touch screen. Then you got this cable here, which I believe is for the speakers. Um, so the speaker connects here and then I think the wire, yeah, it runs all the way along underneath to this one. Let me turn this off. Okay. Um, again, there's an M.2 SATA SSD cable or port here. Um, you got the wireless card here. You would have to pop these antennas up before taking the whole board out as well as taking out that screw. Um, but if you want to replace the wireless card, you have to take the whole board out. So that's going to be a pain. You might as well use a USB wireless adapter. All right, then you got this connector here. I think this is for the microphones and the webcam. But that's pretty much all there is to this. If you wanted to change the heatsink thermal paste, you can. There's four screws here. I think this will come out. You have to take the fan out with it. The fan connector is there. But yeah, I'm not going to take out all these components. If you want to see how these little latches work, you can watch my older videos. I posted so many times of the same stuff. I don't want to do it over and over again. It's kind of risky taking apart extra stuff because sometimes you can break stuff on accident. Um, I mean, there's a low chance, but still, I don't want to have any risk of that. Anyways, there's the RAM under here. So to remove this, I get my fingernail or a plastic pry tool underneath this metal thing, and then you can lift it there. Go underneath the other corner and lift that up as well then you can actually like flop this over okay as you can see they're only using one of the slots for the ram but there's two and the ram that they're using is pc4 2400r so pc4 2400 i think there's also 2400t you can probably use the same thing but this is uh, 8 gig PC4 2400R. So if you want, you can get another matching stick. You probably want to check yours first because sometimes they don't use the same one um, even though it's the same exact model. So you want to open yours and check what you have on your own computer. Don't just go based off my videos. Okay, so if you get like two of the same sticks of RAM, um, you'll get dual channel memory and it'll run a bit faster. So it's kind of a good idea to upgrade that. Um, though having more than eight gigs of RAM doesn't really do much other than the main thing is having the two sticks of RAM. That's more important. If you had two four gig sticks, it would work just as well as if you had the two eight gig sticks for most people, because most people don't use that much RAM. All right, so we're going to put this battery back in, just line it up, drop it back down. Okay. And then we're going to put the battery screws back in. Looks like they bent this stuff all up. I'm gonna try and bend that back so it's nicer for them. Okay. All 
All right, get all those screws in. And then I'll show you what I mean by the the BIOS reset thing. I don't think you really need to change much, but um, once you log into your computer, um, you want to make sure that the date and time is correct. Otherwise, your internet will have issues and some software will also have issues. Okay, so make sure you do that. All right, so we've got all these screws back in for the battery. Okay, so now we'll just put this cover back on. So the cover, you just line it up like that. And then you just push this back down. So just clip it all back in place. Okay, oops, there we go. And just go around, make sure it's all clipped in, just like that, okay? I'm gonna see if I can bend this flat again. I don't know why it's all dented up like that, but we'll try and bend it out. Hmm. I don't know if I can bend this flat for them. Can I bend this outwards for them? Okay, it's kind of going. I don't know how I'll flatten this piece. Let me use this and flatten it. There we go, kind of. Okay, so that's pretty much all there is. So hopefully this video helped you guys. If it did, please like and subscribe because that'll help others find my videos. Thank you for watching. I guess you can watch me put back the rest of the screws. Don't forget to put the rubber feet back on. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Don't forget the bottom screws down here use T5, uh, a T5 screw uh, screwdriver, not the PH1 or J JIS one. So make sure that you switch your screwdriver after, okay? So I'm gonna just tighten in all these screws, just like that, all right. And then we will switch to the T5 and put back the three screws at the bottom there, okay? Just tighten back in all these three screws and we are good to go. So again, hopefully this video helped. Like and subscribe, help others find my videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in another one. And if you can't figure out anything, um, remember my other videos show pretty much everything. So just watch them all. It's good to get experience from watching them before you start messing around with things on your own computer. All right, I'll see you in another one. Bye.